Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be continuing our RTS tutorial series hitting a broadly debated topic of group pathfinding. Let's take a look at what we're starting with and what we'll be working towards. In our base game, you'll notice I added an enemy our units can't quite handle yet, which is these boulders. So let's take a look at how they behave. Select these units and tell them to move over there. As you see, they move towards the boulder and stop because they can't pathfind around them, so we have to move them manually. Now let's see how they handle the attack move command. We tell them to attack move over there. You'll notice most of them are just waiting there in the back for their allies to die before they can engage the enemy. Some of them will actually find their way around and with attack move they were supposed to all get over there. So these units are not supposed to be here. Now let's see what we'll have by the end of this video. We select these units and tell them to attack move over there. They pathfind around the rocks and as you see they actually concave the enemy units. So they don't wait in the back but rather try to find their way to the enemy and fight them. And also all of these units actually got to the location that we told them to get to. Let's talk a little bit about what will allow us to achieve this functionality. In Godot, we have our Navigation 2D node, which is a 2D wrapper for the Godot A star class. And the way that Navigation 2D works is Navigation 2D is the parent and it has children. And its children provide navigation polygons. Navigation polygons tell us which terrain we can traverse uh, when pathfinding. So whereas collision shapes tell us where we can't go, nav polygons tell us where we can go. In this case, uh, how this will look inside our scene tree is we will have a navigation 2D node and as its child we'll have a tile map which will feed uh, the navigation polygon of every grass tile inside our map to the nav2d. And this is done automatically. So the only thing we need to do is have navigation polygons on grass tiles inside of our tile map and have the tile map as the child of the nav2d. And from that, we can get a simple path, which takes two vectors, start and end and it returns an array of other vectors. An array of vectors that allows us to go from the start to the end of our path. So how this would look is we have our start and let's say we have boulders over here, two boulders, and here's our end. It would return something like this. So an array of these vectors. So what we'll need here is a function that will allow us to move along this path, which is going to be brilliantly named move along path. So this is the first thing that we'll do. From this, however, you can notice two problems. The first is that it doesn't take into account other units. I mean, we could try to be smart and put the units inside of our navigation 2D. Let's see how that works. So we have our visible navigation. We can't see the navigation because our tile map doesn't have navigation for the grass. What's that? The navigation for the grass. So we have um, our collision over here, occlusion, uh, navigation. We add the full tile of the grass to the navigation. Let's add a navigation to D. Drag it up to the top, collapse the Y sort, and move the tile map as a child. Now we can see our navigation. So if we take all of these units and drag it to the navigation node, you'll see nothing changes. The only thing that changes is that our units are now not drawn properly because they're not Y sorted. So move them back. And let's talk about the second problem. 
which is that it doesn't take into account our collision shape. So let's say that we have a wall over here, poorly drawn rectangle. This is a wall. We have our start and we have our end. What it would return is this. These points over here. But it's not accounting for our collision shape. So when our unit would try to move along this path, it would hit this corner. It might get past it, but it will still slow it down. In the worst case, we'll get stuck on the edge. So the second thing that we'll do is implement steering behaviors. And the way that we'll do that is by having raycasts. So let's say we have our collision shape, unit collision shape over here, and we'll have five raycasts pointing forward, pointing slightly to the right, slightly to the left, a lot to the right, and a lot to the left. And we don't actually rotate our unit um, on movement, we just change its sprite and flip the sprite and so on. So what we'll have to do here instead is have a node 2D parent and ray casts as children. And we'll rotate the node 2D depending on the velocity of the unit. So this will allow us to do two things. First, it will allow us to avoid collisions with walls. And the second is it will allow us to organically concave the enemy units. So something like this. We have the enemy and our units naturally take positions around the enemy. This is gonna be pretty simple if this raycast is colliding, then we take one of these raycasts and move in their direction. And this function will be called move with avoidance. There's also a third thing that we'll do, which is uh, making sure our units stop when they get to their target as opposed to when they can't get closer to the target. So right now um, we start a timer once they collide with another unit or a wall and once the timer runs out, if we didn't get closer to the target by, a, by some threshold, we stop the unit and forget about the target. Instead what we'll do is when we're colliding with a unit, we will check if the unit is within our movement group, which is uh, the group that was given a certain command. And if that unit has reached its target, then we can stop. So basically how this will work is we have units that are going towards the target. And once this unit gets there, so this unit got there and there's units behind them. And these units will move towards this unit because they're moving towards the target once they collide we will check we're in the same movement group and if this unit has reached the target then we can stop something like this so let's get into coding so let's see what we did so far we have our tile map inside of the navigation 2D node, uh, we made sure that our tile set, our simple grass tile navigation is a full rectangle. So the first thing that we'll be doing inside of the unit is the set target function. And we we'll need a target over here. Inside this function, we will be getting a path from our navigation 2D as nav 2D get simple path position and target self global p 
position. And the second thing is we'll be setting the movement target to target. So we will need the nav path variable, the nav 2D variable, and that's it. We'll start a new variable section called navigation. Variable nav, nav path is a pull vector to array. And the second thing is on ready var nav 2D is equals to get node navigation 2d invalid escape sequence you very good now good now once we have the target we can start moving along this path which is function move along path so if our nav path size size is greater than zero we can get distance to next point is equals to position distance to nav path zero size is the function and the reason why we need the distance to variable uh, distance to next point is because we want to make sure that our distance to um, uh, the next point inside of our nav path array is less than our movement so if we if we get past it uh, that's not good we want to delete this point then and start moving towards the next point so for this we will add another variable which is called our leg reset threshold there's a reason for for this being nine specifically uh, that i will explain later uh, but for now um, our leg reset threshold is when we are resetting the point we are moving towards in our path. So if distance to next point is less than leg reset threshold, then we nav path remove zero. We remove the, the closest point to us. And then we check if nav path size is not zero so if we reach the target we don't want to keep moving and then we can set our velocity to um, position direction to nav path zero times speed and we can move and slide along this velocity Otherwise, we don't need to reset the point we're moving towards. We can just do this. So we're moving towards the, the point that we didn't reset. And we're moving and sliding. We can make sure that we are using this function inside of our movement code. So instead of just setting the movement target on right click, we'll set parent set target event position we'll set state to states moving and then inside the state logic uh, when we're moving instead of moving to target we will move along path and we will pass it the delta so let's see they do path fine now and they can kind of get past walls. Let's let's turn off the navigation. We don't need the visible navigation anymore. It's just getting in the way. So they do find the path and they move towards the point. So now let's add the ray casts that we'll need for the wall avoidance in there. We'll add a node 2D which which we will be rotating in order to make sure that our raycasts are working in the right direction and our transform of the node 2D has to be the same, our position of the transform in the node 2D has to be the same as our position inside of our collision shape to make sure um, that we are um, kind of avoiding things from the perspective of our, of our collision shape rather than our, just 
our unit in general. So we'll add raycasts. Our raycasts will be working in the direction of this. Uh, we will call this ray front. We'll duplicate this twice. Call this ray ray right. Ray ray right. Ray right. Um, and right direction is over here. So we'll rotate it uh, towards the right, which is 30 degrees to the right. Right. Uh, this will be ray left will be negative 30 and we'll duplicate this and duplicate this um, transform negative 60 and this will be transform 60 so this is how this will work um, when we're moving we will be rotating the node to G so when we're moving in that direction we'll be working looking this way and when this raycast is colliding we can take one of the other raycasts and move in that direction instead so let's reset our rotation and start coding this we will be adding a move with avoidance function we will rotate our rays um, let's rename this rays right and we'll actually be adding a couple of unready bars equals raise and already var ray front equals raise ray front raise rotation velocity angle um, if obstacle ahead we will get a viable ray equals viable ray and if this is not null, then our velocity vector to right, which is just a vector pointing to the right. Um, so let's see how that will work. Vector to right is just ray front with a with a length of one. So the base the base rotation of zero is looking to the right, and we say rotate it. Raise rotation plus viable ray rotation so uh, var viable ray here we'll get viable ray and then viable rays rotation plus viable ray rotation is basically the rotation of the rays where's where's the rotation so if we're rotated in this direction we have our negative 145 rotation and then let's say our right ray is the one we want to use then we add 30 to it and we get 115 is the rotation that we get in the end so we will get that that rotation pointing in that direction that we want, want to move towards and we multiply this by velocity length so this is a unit vector pointing in the direction that we want to move and we want to multiply this by our velocity length which is now that I think about it is, is, is just speed right <laughs> um, and now we can move and slide velocity so let's implement the obstacle ahead and get viable array functions um, function obstacle We'll return a boolean and we will return ray front colliding is colliding right obstacle ahead if we are colliding then we're returning true on obstacle ahead now get viable ray is going to be a ray cast 2d for ray n raise get children if not ray is colliding return ray and here we will return null so um what we will do here is we get the children of rays and we check each ray if it's colliding 
And if one of them is not colliding, we return that ray. And we return the first ray that we find that is not colliding. Interestingly, when you um, say rays get children, the ray that is returned is in the order that they appear inside of the scene tree. So the first ray it will return is ray front, ray right, ray right two, and then ray left, and then ray left two. So if, say, ray right is not colliding and ray left is not colliding, it will return ray right. And later, um, we, might, we might change how the order of these rays, basically. Um, I found that kind of rearranging them can, can lead to just better results. Just looks better when they arrange differently. We won't do that right now, but we'll stick to this for now. So, um, in move along path, instead of move and slide, we will use move with avoidance. Target, movement target. Sorry, not movement target. Now path zero. And here, same thing. So let's see if they don't get stuck as much. Hopefully. I can't tell, honestly. Let's rearrange the race, like I said. Oh, that's because. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Yeah, so they, you saw there, that, that first unit. Dude, don't stop right now. We'll fix that eventually. So that first unit started moving, um, kind of. Way. So, like I said, we'll rearrange this. So, um, there we kind of wanted to move to the right a bit more and then move to the left a bit more. So, we'll first check for the ray right two, which is the one, this one, right? So, instead of moving 30 degrees, we'll first try to move 60 degrees. And it will just kind of give us a bigger angle on the avoidance, right? A little better, I think. So here, let's do a couple things. First, we'll do a longer ray so that the units have a bit more um, warning time for the walls, I guess. Let's see how that works. Um, yep. Um, and the reason why they're freaking out there is because they're actually colliding with the other units, the rays. So what we're gonna do here is change the collision mask to two here. Um, and change our collision mask of the tunnel map, collision layer, sorry, uh, to two as well. So we want to collide with the rays. Um, the difference between the layer and the mask is layer is what collides with us, so the rays will be colliding with uh, with a time up and the mask is what we collide with. The the reason why rays don't have a layer is because nothing can collide with the rays and that's why um, they have collision mask and no collision layer. When our units start moving we set their sprite um, and we don't reset it. Right? So at this point they should be moving um, on they should be on these frames, right? but they're still doing those frames. So we'll actually update Sprite um, on our OAG reset. And the way that we'll do that is we will go into our unit state machine and we will add an update Sprite function. And in this function, we'll actually take all of this code from enter state into here and we'll delete it from enter state and just say update sprite over here. And update sprite will take and we'll call over here. Um, state machine update sprite. State machine update sprite. So now our units should be updating their sprites. All right. So here, let's start working on making sure that we, and when we get to the point, <coughs> we actually stop. And uh, the way we're gonna do that is slightly different from what we used to do. We'll go inside our unit state machine 
and inside first let's set this to 10 target max to 10 so if we're within 10 points of the target then we can stop and this has to be higher than the leg reset threshold just to make sure that we keep moving to the target until we reach it but if we set the, the last point inside of our array and we reset the target and we haven't reached it yet we'll never get there right so um, that is that um, and inside of our get transition inside of our um, moving position distance to parent movement target target max and parent movement target is parent position states idle and command none so our one unit should be able to get there right now right yeah and he stops but uh, we want to add such a thing as units group unit groups and when we're selecting units uh, we actually get an array of weak references to the units that we're selecting so we can we can return this once a unit asks so we'll, we'll get a function get movement group and it will return turn we craft we craft selected okay and we will add a navigation of our movement group group is equals to nothing and uh, we will get on ready bar game equals get node game and when we are setting target we'll set movement group to uh, game get movement group what we want to do here is to check that when we're colliding with a unit um, inside our movement group so first we'll check if the unit is inside our movement group and if that unit is already idle then we can switch to idle and stop moving because that unit has has reached the target and so if we reach the target if he reached the target then, and we're colliding with him then we also reach the target right check for colliders reaching target reaching targets can we can we make this shorter somehow uh colliders and we will check every collider for i and get slide count and for unit in movement group we will check if unit is still alive and if unit is still alive then we check if unit if unit get reference is actually the collider is actually the collider which we will get our collider over here. get slide collision i collider right and if unit get reference is collider then we can check if collider reached target set state state machine machine states idle and we can set position movement target target to position if unit get reference if unit get, get reference then unit if unit get reference collider then collider if collider reach target and state machine set state state machine state idle movement target is position we'll be moving this inside of um, the state machine later but for now we will keep it here um, let's see if right reach target function reached target uh, we will return a boolean and we will return movement target is equals to position 
here we can see colliders reached target. So let's see. Reach target and they all stop. And they all stop. So the problem that we'll run into, let's let's get them in a line, kind of. Right? So when this one reaches, they all stop. We want them to kind of jiggle a little bit to make sure that they're in a bit of a circle rather than whatever whatever they're in. Um, so, and the way that we're going to do that is by using the timer that we already have, by using the stop timer. And um, if stop timer is stopped, then we will do this. And instead of this, we will do um, stop timer start right and once stop timer runs out we are connected to this inside of the state machine so um states is not dying set state states idle and we can say parent uh, movement target equals to parent position Right? So this, what this will give us is they will wait for a little bit before stopping, which they don't do. Because our wait timer is too short. We'll make this longer. So now they kind of try to do this a little bit more, right? So they don't stop immediately, but rather they kind of try to wiggle, wiggle around a bit, right? So, once they're wiggling, um, let's do something else. Um, and what we want to do is to make sure that we are actually avoiding stationary units. So right now, let's, let's position this, these units kind of like this, right? And we throw, throw these units at them. Okay, why are you... Oh, right. Uh, we want to make sure that we stop the timer when we set the movement target. Uh, so stop timer, timer, stop. So if in case they their stop timer started the last time they reached reached the point, but we didn't let it finish run out on the next on the next movement kind of command right so what was happening was that uh, we were reaching this target but these units still didn't stop and we were calling a new movement all right so and when that timer ran out these units stopped and told all the other units to stop so we need to make sure that the stop timer is stopped over here and now, to get back to what I was talking about, um, let's posi position these units over here and throw these at them. So they they are kind of freaking out over there a little bit. I just, um, it looked a little weird when they stopped. I just want to make sure that these units aren't stopping them because they're supposed to not stop. So let's, let's throw them over here. So this is all one movement group, right? They're colliding with their group. Now let's split these off a little bit and let's see if they're in the same group. Collided with group, why are you in the same group? We could have selected append. Right, uh, we could have selected is equals nothing. Thank you. So finally, <laughs> a third time, let me get back to what I was talking about. Uh, we want to avoid these units when we move past them. Right now we can get stuck on them. Um, so 
it's harder it's harder to avoid um, moving units because we might be in the same group and I mean we could check if we're in the same group and avoid units that we're not in a group with but um, that might be a topic for another video or I might just do it because there's there's not much to that it's just it's just extra work but for now uh, we want to make sure we're avoiding these units and the way that we're going to do that is by uh, when we're entering state if we're entering states idle or attacking then we want to switch our um, collision layer to turn on our second collision layer so we can treat our raycasts of other units can start treating a stationary unit as just a as just a wall so we we can safely avoid them without kind of uh, messing up everyone's pathing right uh, but with moving un units we don't want to avoid them um, so what we're going to do is set our collision layer um, to 2 um, set our collision layer 2 to turned on if we're in idle or attacking if states idle or states attacking if the array of the states states idle and states attacking has state new state then we can set collision layer bit the first the second layer I forget if it's if it's ordered from zero or from one we'll, we'll start with, with one I think and then true so we'll turn on this collision layer so and if states states moving or states engaging units in the idols in the stationary states we want to avoid and units in the non-stationary state we want to not avoid bit 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 so let's see let's make a wall of these stationary units So we do avoid them. See, without it, we get stuck on them, right? So let's set this to true. There are a couple last things that we need to do. So if we're engaging, we're actually going to keep the old move to target code. We'll be slightly changing it. Um, in order to make sure that we use the new move with avoidance function over here move with avoidance this function we want to use this function when we are moving to engage an enemy get rid of this and we'll say move with avoidance move with avoidance target target do we even use target no, we don't. I don't think we use target. So we can say move with avoidance because we are setting the velocity to the direction of the target times speed. And when we attack these targets, we should actually avoid our allies better. Um, as you saw there, when they try to attack move, um, towards a target, there's a couple things that happen. So first, they try to reach their previous points, their previous nav points, because those nav points, we never reached them technically, because we weren't using the move along path function then. So what we're gonna do, once we reset, um, reset the, states, uh, the state from attacking into idle, and back into moving if we're attack moving. So we're continuing to move um, to our target. We want to recalculate our path. So we'll be recalculating the path is just simply saying nav path is movement target. Right? Um, so we don't need this actually. We want to keep 
uh, we want to keep the movement group, we want to keep the movement timer going. If we reach the target, we want to keep the movement target the same. On get transition, if we're idle and we're switch in, in attack move and we're switching into moving, then we can call parent recalculate path. Right? So now, once we get to the enemies, we should start going from wherever we were, right? And they're spazzing there a little bit. It's another problem with our code that we'll be solving shortly. But they should be going from the place that they were last and not trying to reach their previous points. And what they were doing there is spazzing a little bit um, because uh, they were still looking for their enemies. They're still engaging them. Because the way that we're um, checking if we should switch our target is by if our target is Q freed as opposed to dying, right? Uh, we switch states to idle. And what we're going to do here is we'll be adding funk is dying, which will return a boolean and we will return state equals state states dying and then if attack target parent attack target get reference is dying then we will set state to idle and set attack target to null and now the same thing with this with engaging we want to make sure that if we're trying to reach the target what, what does this do? One second. Parent closest enemy within range is not null, and we want to switch to attacking right. And if we're engaging and our attack target is dying, then we set states to idle and parent attack target to null. So now that should be solved. And they immediately start going to where they, they were supposed to be going. And then they reach their target and they stop. Right, and one last bit that I want to do is, of course, to make sure that we can select all these units. Uh, so as you can see, we selected all we're supposed to be have selected all, but some of these units are not selected because our selection code is limited our intersect shape parameters our max results integer is 32 so we set query and max results to 100 so now when we select all of these they should be all selected so in the next video we'll be adding more query units and resource collection there are some issues that are going to come up with the way that our game is currently set up uh, with pathing to and from resources because of collisions with other gatherers so we'll be tackling those issues the way that our resources will be set up is going to be warcraft 3 style so wood and gold subscribe if you're interested in seeing that and i'll see you next time